The special session is uh, called to order. I request the uh, Honorable MP Shaykh Muhammad Zainuddin Bato to lead the invocation. To be followed by the national anthem and the Bangsamuro hymn. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbil Alamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina as-sirata al-mustaqim Sirata al-ladhina an'amta alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث اللهم لا تدعنا جنبا إلا غفرته ولا هاما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قديته ولا مريدا إلا سقيته ولا حاجة من حوائز الدنيا ولا آخرة إلا قديته أرحم الرحمين اللهم أصلي ديننا الذي يشمع تمرنا وأصلي دنيا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلي آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير وجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة توقينا زب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رحمن يا رحيم صلى الله تعالى على خير خلق سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وري وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين مغا كبابايان ان بامبانسان اويت نان فيليبيناس آيام وكيل خلص السيد حالا آلام نفوس سنة كوي كوباي Sa mga tangtulog sa sibuyat sa nani kong pangraw ay ginatangtulog ako.
Abbas Basit Sari Abu Majid Adio Jau Rahman Alonto Ahang Abdullah Alamia Laisa Alaudin Faiz Ali Ibrahim Ali Lanang Jr. Ali Edi Mapag Alil Cesar Ambuloto Suarto Ampatuan Baintan Anayatin Susana Asmawil Muslima Balidong Ali Pangalian Bara Hamid Aminuddin Basman Basman Anna Tarhata Bato Muhammad Chainuddin Burahan Abraham Present Kandaw Bay Maleha Present Dandamon Latip Maysara Diamla Musa Dipatuan Saprula Ibrahim Ahod Ismail Haji Abdulaziz Gaya Kabdula Gera Edward Hasim Abdullah Present Hassan Hatimil Present Iqbal Mwager Ismail Rasul Present Jajuri Raisa Jaquilan Muslimin Present Karon Bainon Lidasan Mussolini Loong Don Mustafa Present Lorena Jose Ribani Makakwa Abdurauf Present po Makapaar Abdullah Makaraya Jamil Makasalong Marjani Manguda Dato Dato Kadafe Mantawil Malik Mastura Dato Tokaw Mastura City Sihara Mawali Lamil Bahar Midtimbang Dato Midpantaw Midmog Rasul Mujahid Abdul Mohmin Munoz Hussein Oranon Soib Pakasa Mubayda Pak Abdullahab Pangandaman Nabila Margarita Ramos Gamila 
Rimbang Edrisa Nasir. Sakar Modayaw. Present. Salendad Said. Sali Ali Said. Saliga Romeo. Present. Salik Ali. Sanki Ali. Sani Punduma. Present. Satar Alzad. Sema Omar Yasser. Sema Romeo. Sheikh Said. Silonga Naida. Sulaiman Ali. Tago Paisalim. Tan Nabil. Present. Uja Sahi. Present. Ulama Melanio. Usman Asfar. Yaakob Muhammad. Present. UAK Narciso. Speaker, after the roll call out of the 79 members of the Bangsamoro Transition Authority Parliament, 35 physically responded to the call and 31 member of the Parliament responded via Zoom. Mr. Speaker, we have a total of 66 attendees, both physical and virtual. We therefore certify, Mr. Speaker, that there is presence of quorum. Thank you. With uh, 66 members responding to the call, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Before we proceed to the agenda, the chair would like to make a statement. My uh, Fellow members of the parliament, ladies and gentlemen, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Today, we open another special session to tackle the Bangsamoro Education Code. As we continue our journey, for peace and development. I do not think there can be, there can be any landmark accomplishment that is worth celebrating. That our being able that can be any landmark accomplishment that is wor worth celebrating than our being able to establish the Bangsamoro Education Code. For centuries, we have been fighting for recognition and empowerment. Now we are on the threshold of real empowerment, of providing the penultimate means of true individual empowerment for our people. <laughs> the attainment of knowledge. Knowledge not only to know more about life, the surroundings and of the world, but more importantly, knowing how to make good use of such precious power of knowledge. After all, what is knowledge if it is not used to pursue what is good, to support and bring to life what we have pledged to persevere, to achieve? That is moral governance. I am particularly delighted that the Madaris educational system has been strengthened in the proposed code, 
while the Madaris educational system has long been institutionalized, the national system of basic education, there are still gaps in its implementation, particularly on the funding aspect. Hopefully with this law, we will be able to address these gaps and utilize this system as an instrument to promote national understanding and unity. In our lifetime, we have always lived in the periphery. We have only been looking back in time for inspiration. When we played a fundamental role in shaping the world, after all the world we know today, have not been shaped without the Bangsamoros and Islam's contribution. Sadly, we know so little about our golden age as what we have been learning from maths of the books today and universities have all but been put together by the victors of world wars. This is not sour graping. I hope this annotation is not interpreted as such. We recognize that the Christian world has contributed much to the world, but we have contributed as much, and what we contributed has been the grain that fueled later development in the world. The classical philosophy and early achievements in science, in physics and chemistry, among others, those that have led to more advancements in civilization, are not all endowment from the West, but much, in fact, were from the East, that which were originally considered East or Oriental. This is more an exhortation, not only to our people, but everyone, to not only know and give due recognition of how and what has been during the heyday of Islam, but to generate enthusiasm to work hard today and in the future to contribute to the further betterment of the world. After all, I am sure you will agree, so much of the strife we face today is born out of ignorance, the very fuel of avarice, pride, and temerity. Imagine if we'll once again have the capacity to discover and invent the world will have additional wherewithal to address a lot of the world's woes from famine to epidemic and now pandemic, natural disasters, and even settled scores of security issues. Instead of remaining in the periphery and serving more as recipients of development and our breakthroughs without even making an effort, for example, much of what we eat have, in fact, led to the fundamental discussions on health today. If we can consciously contribute more, the world would surely be a much better place to live in. This is the vision in the enactment of the Bangsamoro Education Code. It is about time that we have the kind of education we have always aspired for as a people one that is comprehensive as it is integrated, an education system in the Bangsamoro, one that is integrated as to recognize the importance of all industries, skills, and intelligence needed, not only for the region, but for the whole country, to reach full bloom where each industry reinforces the others. Regional centers, of commerce already have their complement of education institutions. Once we have ours in place, we should be able to coordinate and collaborate with them. Then every Filipino will be able to appreciate what we can ably contribute for an inclusive development for the whole country. We can then now envision progress for every Filipino, regardless of ethno-linguistic and religious and our cultural affiliation. 
as is the aim aptly amplified by the Honorable Minister Muhagir Iqbal. No Bangsamoro child shall be left behind, not only in the region, but in the whole country. We have every advantage in our hands. Yes, we may be trailing other regions, even the rest of the country in many aspects, but we are given two advantages that we would be able to make full advantage of. One, we are the only autonomous region existing so far. In fact, we are the only regional government. A key mechanism that will address the fragmented nature of governance in the whole country. The whole country took the right direction in establishing decentralization as a key policy of the state implementing the same in 1992. This is not enough, however, as the limitation of fragmentation has not been foreseen. So many LGUs have prospered, but there has been so much disparity, on the other hand, as the others could not just possibly do what the other LGUs who are fortuitously endowed managed to do. We are given a unique opportunity for an integrated, more collaborative approach to governance, we should be able to maximize it. The second advantage is that this is the second, if not the third time we are given an opportunity to organize ourselves. We have accomplished so much. When ARM was established then, we can only accomplish more now and build on success. More than that, we have the opportunity to look at how other regions of the LGUs and LGUs have been doing and learn from their successes and failures as one region, comprising a number of LGUs that collaborate of as a people who are one in vision. We have every advantage. It is only up to us how to make full use of which in order to achieve what we deserve as a region and as a people. Let the naysayers claim that the BTA has not been able to do much. On the contrary, we have been doing a lot despite and in spite of all limitations, man-made and otherwise. They say we have three years to work. So many people know better that we only have less than two years to actually work on the Herculean task that were given to us. There is so much more to be done, and there is no letting up for us. We, as we have done and shown from the very start, let this enactment of another landmark piece of le re regional legislation be another response to cynicism and instead promote unity to the Bank Samoro. I cannot applaud all the leaders enough and the people who have given their faith to us enough. I am just so proud that this milestone is consistent with the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as this, he said, whoever follows a path in the pursuit of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him a path to paradise. The work after all has just started. Regardless of what is next, let everyone be assured that we will always be in the service of the Bank Samoro. I beseech your kind consideration of this important legislation. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi the uh, session is suspended for one minute to allow the Deputy Speaker Omar Sima to preside over the special session.
Speaker Ali Pangalian Balindong, Honorable Members of the Bangsamoa Transition Authority, uh, physically present as well as those who are present through Zoom, visitors, staffs of the MPs, friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mr. Speaker, we are now on special session number eight. This special session was requested by the Honorable Chief Minister Ahud Balawag Ibrahim in accordance with uh, the Par BBT Parliamentary Rules, Procedures, and Practices. Mr. Speaker, the only agenda we have is uh, on the committee report number 71, submitted by the Committee on Basic Higher and Technical Education. This is in relation to proposed BT Cabinet Bill number 70, entitled An Act Providing for the Establishment, Maintenance, and Support of a Complete and Integrated System of Quality Education in the Bangsamoro. Mr. Speaker, may we respectfully recognize the Chairman of the Committee, MP uh, Mohagir Iqbal, to deliver a speech on this uh, sponsorship speech on the committee, in the committee report, Mr. Speaker. The Chair of the Parliament Committee on Basic Higher Technical Education is recognized. Audio Billahi Minasari Kwani Rajim Smilahi Rahmani Rahim Chief Minister of the Bangsamur Autonomous Region in Muslim in Anau Honorable Ahud Balawag Ibrahim Mr. Speaker Majority Floor Leader, the Minority Floor Leader who is on the Zoom, my distinguished colleagues in the Warm Cabinet and the Bangsamur Authority, esteemed members of the Committee on Education, friends, partners, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is my honor to present before this August Hall of the Bangsamoro Parliament the report of the Committee on Basic Higher and Technical Education on BTA Parliament Number 70, or an act providing for the establishment, management, and support of a complete and integrated system of quality education in the Bangsamoro, otherwise known as the Bangsamoro Education Code. With your indulgence, Allow me to share my thoughts on the passage of this legislation. <clears throat> Having reached this age, I, together with the members of the MILEP, have suffered a lot and experienced all forms of difficulties in the past for the purpose of asserting the Bangsamoro's right to self-determination. I thought that the act of crafting a law is an easy job, and I never thought 
that it could be this tough. It demands so much of your time, effort, resources, and commitment of an indefatigable team consisting of my fellow MPs, lawyers, staff, members of the Secretariat, the technical team, and all stakeholders. For this, I thank you for the unconditional support. Personally, I can feel the heavy burden on my shoulder because I am the ministry I am the Minister of the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education, or for short, MBHTE, and at the same time, I am the Chairperson of the Committee on Basic Higher and Technical Education. I felt that it is my personal responsibility to make it happen. Alhamdulillah, with superb teamwork, I am by the grace of Almighty Allah, we were able to finish this bill. This piece of legislation is an embodiment of our aspiration for the Bangsaburo children to have a bright future, which is an upshot of a quality education. Our goal was not to develop a perfect Bangsaburo education code. Instead, we want a version that includes significant provisions that will enhance the Bangsaburo education system and protect the well-being, rights of our teachers and non-teaching staff, parents, and most importantly, our learners. Furthermore, we need, to, we need a code that is responsive responsive to any developments and shifting priorities in the educational system. Strictly speaking, while this legislation may have breathed some procedural imperfections, but rest assured that it went through the processes. On October 10, 2019, the proposed Bangsamoro Education Code was submitted to the Parliament. Thereafter, it was referred to the Committee on Education. Subsequently, public hearings and consultations with various stakeholders were conducted in major areas such as the island provinces, the mainland, consisting of the provinces of Lanao, Maguindanao, and Cotabato City, and one in the Special Geographical Area, or SGA. Output in the public consultations were submitted to the committee who later on created a technical working group or TWG to process all the outputs during the area consultation. The TWG, after similar meetings and deliberations, presented their output to the Committee on Education which serves as the basis for the issuance of the committee report. Moreover, the concerned members of Parliament's proposed amendments were thoroughly discussed. I couldn't express more of my gratitude to MP Maisara C. Damdamun Latif for her very well thought and detailed proposed amendments. My personal congratulations to MP Maisara Latif. Of course, to Deputy Speaker Adjong, Minority Floor Leader MP Attorney Eliza Alamia, MP May Intan Ampatuan, MP Susana Ayanayatin, MP Ana Basman, MP Malayha Kandao, MP Gayat, MP Abdullah Hasim, MP Jo Lorena, MP Ramos, MP Satar, MP Saliga, MP Ulama, MP Yaakub, MP and Vice Chairman of the Committee Attorney Mitmo, the TWG Vice Chairman, my gratefulness to the excellent assistance to the rest of the members of the TWG 
and committee, your active participation is worthy of praise. Moreover, members who cannot be physically present participated via Zoom platform to see to it that their take on a particular matter is heard. I can mention some of the mainstays who persevered and stayed with us during the height of the intense deliberation. Of course, first of all, Vice Chairman Rasmit Mook, MP Datu Tokaw Mastura, MP Susana Anayatin, MP Ibrahim Ali, MP Marjani Makasalong, MP Edi Ali, MP Ulama, MP Mussolini Lidasan, and of course, MP and Minister Hamid Bara. The Committee on Basic Higher and Technical Education also judiciously deliberated the proposed bill. Thus, I can vouch that this bill is procedurally and substantially sound. During the TWG and committee meetings, matters pertaining to the qualification of the school's division superintendent and an assistant, assistant school's division superintendent to real or at Hafiz al Quran, special eligibility of mudaris, and support of several institutions have always been the contentious point of discussion. Hopefully, having exhaustive discussion in all these matters, I expect manageable interpolation in the plenary. I often say that education is paramount for the Bangsa Moro. Education is vital not only because it is a priority of the Bangsa Moro government's development plans, but it is the bedrock on which we build on the hope and future of the next generation. Education helps every learner to understand their possibilities and the opportunity to determine their paths. As the late Nelson Mandela said in his book with the title, The Long Walk to Freedom and to quote, education is the great engine of personal development. It is through education <coughs> that the daughter of a patient can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that the child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given, that separates one person from another. Through quality education, inclusive and balanced education, we hope our learners will thrive in their selected professional endeavors and effectively contribute to the well-being of their families, communities, and the Bangsamoro region. Nevertheless, we are also aware of the difficulties our educational system faces, especially now that we are in the middle of the pandemic. Our good intentions are useless without a clear strategy and the necessary legal instrument to help realize our goals and provide our people with tangible results. For this reason, the proposed Bank Samoro Education Code plays a very critical role. Once approved, the code will allow the ministry to effectively govern the education system in the Bank Samoro and set the strategic direction towards a balanced, accessible, and high standard educational structure that reflects our context and our culture. It shall assign the rights and responsibilities of the BARM government, the MBHTE, and its offices, the educators, the public, and all concerned parties to develop accessible and quality education in the Bangsamoro. Moreover, the code will contribute to creating harmonized relationships to ensure effective collaboration within the education community in the region. As a result, we can now institute the necessary reforms to deal with the protracted difficulties that have affected our education sector even before establishing the BARM. Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, our children deprived of an opportunity to study and unlock their potential, whether through academic schooling, technical and skills development, or the Madari system,
is a grave injustice. As public servants, we have the moral obligation to uplift the lives of our people, especially the most vulnerable sectors, through essential programs and policies. I am sure that you, my esteemed colleagues in Parliament, share this sentiment. Despite our differences in opinion, we are all committed to our constituents and our respective advocacies. And I believe that education is 